Uh, just been asked by a few people to do a color correction tutorial. Um, show what I use, the software, um, how I approach it. Like, depending on what map it is, you have to do certain things, and just an overall color correction using uh, After Effects and Magic Bullet looks. So the first thing you want to do is bring in a clip, whatever you want to use. Um, for today, I'm going to use some clips that come from uh, uh episode I made on Terminal. The reason I'm showing Terminal today is because it has uh, simple colors. It has um, reds and blues and whites and uh, even colors throughout. So it really lends itself to a good place to learn how to color correct. Uh, first thing you have to know is you're definitely going to want to have the clip uh, preview in full because when you bring that in Magic Bullet looks, um, it has to be in full to, for you to see the whole thing. Um, you're going to go ahead and add a new layer. Go to New. Go to Adjustment Layer. Then you're going to go to Effect. Magic Bullet Looks. And go to Looks. Click on Edit over here. In the description below, I'm going to include a folder with probably eight maybe seven or eight different color corrections that I have. Um, I have uh, what do I have here? That maybe that's more like 10 or 11. So I'll put all of the ones I have in there. You're welcome to use them, change them. They're just good platforms to get started with. Um, the one for this one I'm going to use is, uh, I'll show you what it looks like here. It's called Terminal. It's not very different. The, the change is subtle. Uh, you you want to work with what the map gives you and not change much. You just want to enhance what you're already given. I'll click OK and you can see the difference again real quick. There you go. It's n it's not too crazy, but it's it's clean, it's crisp. Uh, the colors are bold and they're defined. Now, one thing I should have said right from the beginning is when you're getting ready to do. It, I'm going to get rid of this real quick so we can see this from the beginning. One thing you need to do is when you do a color correction is try and find a spot where you're looking at as many different colors as possible. Uh, you're getting some of the sky involved because it's when you get the sun, uh, if I can go back a little bit, when you get different sunspots or different bright patches, it's it all depends. You have to make sure that, um, I guess I'm stuttering on my words, but you have to make sure things like these lens flares or anything that's really bright when you add a color correction to it those will be overexposed and you just have to be careful with those so my best advice is to basically just pick a spot where there's a lot of different things going on so you can get a general idea of what to do so I'm going to go ahead and add another layer oh shoot don't want a shape layer go ahead and add um, a new layer the way I do it is I always just press control alt y that brings up a new layer for you. Go to, again, you're going to go to Magic Bullet Looks. Go to Looks. Edit. Now, let's see what it looks like with the color correction I had, and then I'll teach you the, the method for developing that. See what I mean? The, the sun's not too overexposed, but again, things that are super bright will definitely be more bright than they were before the color correction, if that makes sense. So let's go ahead and get rid of that and start from the beginning. Um, I'll definitely put a link that says, uh, you know, skip to 3 minutes and 30 for the start of the correction. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is go to Post, uh, go down to Curves, drag that anywhere on the screen. Uh, for RGB, uh, just as just a general color, um, I used to lower this a little bit, but it brings down the lows too much. Watch the difference. Like, if you look over here where there's kind of a shadow and you bring this down it lowers the dark regions so the bottom half of the curve is what takes care of the the darker regions and the top half of the curve is what takes care of the you know brighter stuff so the stuff in the clouds goes up with that and then even higher tones would go up with this curve so for terminal and, and maps that generally have brighter colors um, what happens in the dark is if you lower this curve too much in dark areas it turns almost black and it's really hard to see what's going on so I don't I, I take this down just a just a hair on the bottom end on the top end um, let me start at zero so you can see what it looks like um, I'll restart the whole thing so from the bottom take it down just a tiny bit take the top half up a little bit more than you did the bottom so the bottom half almost that's almost too much. You almost don't want to do anything to the bottom. Just like that. For red, 
you're going to want to take the red down a little bit. Take the top half up, match the RGB curve. Should have a nice S. The green just mess with the top half just a little bit. Helps to bring out the blue, the blue up top, believe it or not. Um, you can pull the bottom down and see what it does. It gets rid of the, makes everything kind of purple. It gets rid of the greens. You can pull the green down just a hair. Um, I never really mess with blue, so that's what you're working with with those. You can see them again, just in case. All right, the next thing I like to do is still in post. I like to go to uh, lift gamma gain. For the lift, I take the lift over a little bit to the blue. Not, you know, it's just a guess. I don't really have, you know, specific numbers or anything. I suppose you could, um, well, you can just download the um, the file itself and check out the numbers and match it and, you know, alter it from there. But, uh, I'm sorry, back to what we're doing. Gamma, take the gamma over to the blue a little bit. So lift and gamma are going straight blue. I like to even take the lift a little bit to cyan. Uh, the gain is where you're going to see the most difference. I like to go pretty much straight out to the yellow and a little bit up to red. Uh, a little bit more. And then the difference will happen real fast. See, there you go. You will move it just a tiny bit and it starts to change. Right about here is good because we're going to do a few more things that are going to change things. I know it seems a little pink, a little red, but just wait till we're done. And then uh, we'll go back and clean everything up. The next thing I do, still staying in post, is saturation. Uh, it starts you off at green. I generally pull a little bit up to the yellow, pull it back. See what I'm saying? If you're at the green, it makes everything a little bit more red. If you pull that back, things kind of tone down a little bit, go to the yellow. You, it's not going to change it much unless you go real drastic with it. Saturation you usually go up, you know, one, I don't know, you don't want to go too high. Maybe 108, 110 max. The more saturation, the more this comes into play. So you can almost tone it down a little bit. Saturation a little bit more. The saturation level and the color down here kind of play hand in hand. You have to ha find a good balance. But a little yellow, a little green, and about 110 will get you a pretty pretty decent color. Uh, let's see what's next. Anything left in post? Oh, contrast. Bring in contrast. Um, I just bring it up to where you like it. It's, this is kind of a feel thing. I usually go plus 110, uh, 0.110 I should say. That's usually the number I look for. It helps to bring out the uh, the greens and the UAV a little bit. Okay, I think we are done in post. Then I usually go to subject. Um, sometimes I use chromatic. It's called chromatic aberration. What it does um, is it separates the colors out from one another. It's kind of hard to explain, but the red and cyan, it makes them have a, have more contrast. It's kind of like a kind of like a specific contrast for colors you could think of. But if you do it, just bring it out a little bit. It basically the overall effect that that does it makes it a little bit more grainy, a little bit more uh, film like, I guess you could say. Um, as far as subject, I'm trying to think if there's anything I use on here. Uh, not really. In matte, this is one thing I do use is color filter. So in matte, go down to the just the one next to sky filter color filter bring that over yeah it looks crazy don't worry gonna bring that down get that under control and what that does is it helps all the yellows brings them out nice helps the white you might want to tone it down a little bit there you go helps to bring out like it makes the uh, as if there was a glow coming from the top everything's got just a fine glow to it um, sometimes I'll use warm or warm mist that's more of a glow anything full full blue CTB is good that enhances colors uh, I don't generally use it on this um, that's an excellent filter the last thing I usually do is uh, under lens I'll do a little vignette bring that in uh, I take the circle the larger circle out just to the edge here and the strength down to mm, pretty low maybe 45 43 it it, it when you render it out, it's going to be a lot stronger than you think. So here it is. Um, again, we went to post. We used a, free, a few things from post. We used contrast, lift, gamma, gain, saturation, and we use curves. Always start with curves um, to get your, your brightness and your darkness all set where you want. Uh, under subject, you can go ahead and try 
Um, a few things on here, I, I don't use it very much. Matte, uh, you want to use color filter. Full blue CTB is great. Warm is pretty good. Under lens, you want to use uh, vignette. Sometimes they'll throw in edge softness, but it's pretty overdone now. People use it too much, so. Uh, if you want to have edge softness and not have it be so in your face, change the quality to 10. That brings it down a bit, and the blur size, you can take that down a lot. It's not bad. It was cool for a while, but a lot of people started doing it, so it's kind of, you know, over and done with. Uh, that's about it. Uh, I'll click OK and watch for the difference. Definitely pretty dramatic. Uh, you know, doing this on a whim, you look at it, this little might be a little bit too red up the top, but you can play around with things and go back and turn down the red and turn up the red if you really like it, but that's just a general color correction on a simple map. This would work well for um, maybe a skid row. It would work. It might be a little bit too red for high rise, but you could make it work. Uh, this is just a great way for to get terminal done. I will put other um, all my other color corrections. Let's see what I have. Try and wrap up the video here. Keep it short. I have one for Afghan and army style. Something just a clean general one. Uh, I have one that's good for yellows, reds, and sand. Uh, one that's a gradient goes from top to bottom in different ways. Uh, a general correction I have with a strong vignette, something warm, uh, something that's the general color correction with no diffuse, no, that's not too warm. This is just my general color correction. Um, this is what I use for uh, live footage for, uh, it's funny, but real life footage. Uh, and this is for terminal. So these will all be included in a folder. They're very small, they're only, you know, 54K, 73K. So it'll only take you just a few minutes to download. Uh, again, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, I'll see you guys around.